What's up guys, my name is Brandon and welcome back to the 51st Jailbreak Update episode and we have a ton to talk about today. These past couple weeks have been crazy. So in the last episode, episode 50, I talked mainly about Electra and the iOS 11 through 11.1.2 Jailbreak. And then of course you guys know that last week I had a ton of Jailbreak related videos come out so hopefully you got a chance to watch all those. But if you are not Jailbroken on iOS 11 through 11.1.2, you're gonna enjoy this episode. Because in this episode, we're gonna be talking about the status of the iOS 11.2 and the iOS 11.3 Jailbreaks. We're also going to be talking about the upcoming ZeroCon 2018 conference, which Pengu will be attending and talking at. We're going to talk about the latest with Electra, a new iOS 10.3.x jailbreak, and more. All right, so enough talking. Let's go ahead and get into the news. So last week, Ronnie Idan from the Zimperium team released a new sandbox escape vulnerability for iOS 11.2 through 11.2.2 and was recently patched in 11.2.5. So you can see the CVE numbers here and a nicely written explanation of basically how the vulnerabilities can be exploited. He also shows exactly which part of the OS he was able to hijack using this vulnerability. And it shows here that he was able to hijack the springboard. You can see the preferences, the Wi-Fi D, and much more. He goes on to talk specifically about how the vulnerability can be exploited by saying this vulnerability can be used to leak mock ports of every client and it will reveal enormous attack surface on each of the clients. He also gave us the source code, which is hosted on GitHub. And on GitHub, he also answered the question, is it a jailbreak? By saying, depends. Got any kernel vulnerability? You're welcome to chain them together. This one allows you to have a huge attack surface from within the sandbox. So yeah, this is great to see released and does move us a little bit closer to an iOS 11.2 through 11.2.2 jailbreak, but we're not quite there yet. But of course we won't get very close without a kernel exploit. So we're still waiting on a kernel exploit for iOS 11.2 before we can proceed and potentially chain these together. Also with this vulnerability and proof of concept released, it does open up more opportunity for security researchers to dig around in the code and potentially find new vulnerabilities to exploit in 11.2. Now let's talk about the potential for an iOS 11.2 three jailbreak since a vulnerability was also recently released for that firmware. So Abraham Mastery, the creator of Saigon and Houdini, released a new zero day vulnerability for iOS 11.3 on GitHub. And you can see here that the name of it is just Security D Racer 2. And you can see here on the GitHub page, it says Security D POC, which is proof of concept, overflow vulnerability, iOS 11.3, and then it shows the build number for 11.3. And it says an overflow vulnerability in Security D has been discovered, allows full control of certain registers. And if we go to that wiki page, you can read more details about the POC. And the very first section tells us that this new flaw that he released can't be used in any useful exploit, so don't get too excited. He then goes on to further explain the flaw in great detail and ends off with a section titled, what can we use this for, which is what most of you really only care about. And then it says, see the CVE by Luca Tedesco, and then also something by the Pango team. And while this flaw might not be necessarily a vulnerability, it is a good idea to keep an eye on any privilege process that handles paths and attempts to find any potential vulnerability. So yeah, with all that being said, it's nice to see that, you know, a flaw or vulnerability, whatever you want to call it, has been released for iOS 11.3, but I would not get my hopes up. I highly doubt anything's going to be coming for iOS 11.3 in terms of a jailbreak for a while, especially since it's still in beta. However, with all that being said, it's still nice to see things released for iOS versions, future iOS versions that could potentially get us closer to a jailbreak. Now let's talk about the upcoming ZeroCon 2018 conference. And you can see here on the front page of their website, it's a conference for exploit developers and bug hunters, and it's going to be held in Korea on March 29th through the 30th. And the lineup for this year's conference is stacked. You can see here we have talks from the Pengu team, Jonathan Levin, Seguza, and others. Now, a lot of you are probably really excited just to hear the name Pengu, but also to see that they are going to be at this event. And if we go to their section on the site, it shows that Slipper and Zueho from Pengu will be talking about iOS and macOS bugs. The same goes for both Jonathan Levin and Seguza. Their talks will also be based solely around iOS hacking, which is awesome to hear because not everybody at this event is going to be talking about iOS. You can also see the schedule for the event here and also you can see that there is a training course by the Pingu team here. You can see the fee is pretty high there but probably worth every single penny and the subject is the practice and evolution of iOS kernel hacking. So very very interesting stuff and that would definitely be a great workshop to go to if you are interested in iOS exploitation. If you're maybe a beginning security researcher or something like that. I understand not everybody's gonna be able to make it out to Korea you know and pay that amount of money but it's still really cool that Pingu is doing that. So it's gonna be pretty interesting to see what comes from this event at the end of the month but I would not get my hopes too high up. I mean, we are going to see things released after the event, but I would not expect a full jailbreak to be released at the event or anytime after the event. We're probably going to get some bugs released and hopefully a kernel exploit does get released. A kernel bug gets released. That would be really, really nice. But we can also expect a lot of like POCs, a lot of write-ups and things like that, that detail, you know, certain exploits and vulnerabilities. But of course you guys know to stay tuned to the channel and I will bring you guys everything that happens at this event. If it's important, you know, I'll post it on Twitter first. And then obviously I will be making a video as well, either the day of or the day after the event. 
minutes. Now let's discuss another iOS 10 through 10.3.3 jailbreak called Double Helix. Now this jailbreak comes from Temstar and Segusa, and it's basically a 64-bit version of the Helix jailbreak, which works on iOS 10 through 10.3.3 for all devices with a headphone jack. Now this jailbreak is more stable than any other iOS 10.3.x jailbreak, including Yalu, and I actually replaced Yalu on my iPhone 6 with this jailbreak, and I have noticed that it has been a lot smoother. Now unfortunately, iPhone 7 users on 10.3.x cannot use this jailbreak. You're still going to have to stick to Meridian and wait for the final release of that, which I'm not really sure when that's going to be coming, but you guys know I will include that in a jailbreak update video when it does get released. And finally, let's talk about what's been happening with the Electra jailbreak lately. So as of recording this, the latest version of Electra is 1.0.3, and Coolstar described this as the most stable version that will fix any freezing and rebooting issues that you may have had before. And I actually did have freezing issues on my iPhone 10, but once I updated to this latest version, I did not notice any of those freezing issues or random reboot issues at all. So definitely go ahead and update your Electra to the latest version if you have not done so already. Well, now it seems that the toxic ones in the community have pushed Coolstar even further away from wanting to deal with anything related to this jailbreak at all publicly. So now he's basically gonna be releasing updates very privately and very quietly for Electra. You can see that he recently tweeted out saying Electra updates will still be worked on if needed. However, I won't be posting them on here or on Reddit. Updates will only be silently pushed from now on. See link for more info. And on the Tumblr page, Coolstar writes a long blog post titled The Backstory of the Electra Jailbreak and how it eventually turned into a nightmare. He goes into great detail about the jailbreak, the behind the scenes work, and basically just the realization of how tough it is to maintain a jailbreak, especially with people nagging and hating on him and just making it seem like he's the reason people have issues. I'll definitely leave a link below to this article. You should definitely go ahead and check it out and read it. If you want more of behind the scenes and kind of just seeing cool star side of the story, I would definitely recommend you read that. But anyways, guys, that's pretty much it for this episode. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. Also leave a comment down below with any thoughts you have on this video whatsoever. Also make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode or any future episodes. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.